If you owned a 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO, a 1935 Duesenberg SSJ, and a 1994 McLaren F1, your car collection would be the envy of every auto enthusiast in the world. These incredibly rare cars are the three most expensive cars ever sold at auction. Each of these amazing automobiles has a storied history. The Ferrari 250 GTO is a racing icon, while the Duesenberg SSJ was once owned by a Golden Age movie star. The 1994 McLaren F1 is incredibly unique. It's one of the only McLarens that has been modified to match the specifications of the 24 hours of Le Mans winning McLaren race car. Here's a look at the three most expensive cars ever sold at auction. The Ferrari 250 GTO is the holy grail of classic cars. Instead of a stallion on the badge, this Ferrari should have a unicorn. It's that rare and that elegant. $48.4 million might seem like a lot of money for a car, but this is no ordinary car. Few were shocked when a stunning 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO broke the record for most expensive car ever sold at auction back in the summer of 2018. This particular Ferrari 250 GTO is the third 250 GTO built by the Italian automaker and it's identifiable by chassis number 3413 GT. This cherry red beauty certainly lives up to its name. It's fast and incredibly powerful. Reaching speeds of 280 kilometers is a breeze thanks to the powerful V12 engine. It was previously owned by former Microsoft executive Greg Witten, who bought the car in 2000 for a mere $10 million. That's a pretty impressive return on investment. Surprisingly, this prancing horse actually sold for less than what auctioneers anticipated. Sotheby's started the bidding at $35 million and expected it to top out at $45 million. When the gavel fell, it sold for $44 million plus a $4,405,000 commission fee. We still don't know the identity of the mystery buyer, but he or she will likely make a tidy profit when this Ferrari GTO 250 is sold once again. It could one day be worth more than $100 million. A brand new Ferrari 250 GTO cost just $18,000 in 1962, which is about $153,000 when adjusted for inflation. Only 36 Ferrari 250 GTOs were ever built, and surprisingly, most are still in working condition, even the ones that spent a lot of days on the racetrack. The 62 Ferrari 250 GTO was a champion in its day. The car won nine races in 1962 when it was owned by the renowned Ferrari collector Eduardo Lualdi de Bardi. It also won its class at the 63 and 64 Targa Florio endurance race held in Sicily, Italy, and had 15 class and overall wins from 1962 to 1965. When Witten owned the car, he didn't let it sit in the garage. He took part in many vintage racing series and competed in four prestigious GTO anniversary tours. Numerous Ferrari 250 GTOs have been sold at auction, and they have all sold for incredible prices. Cell phone pioneer Craig McCaw bought a 1962 250 GTO in a private sale in 2012 for an estimated $35 million. The car was originally owned by racing legend Sterling Moss and features a lime green paint scheme in honor of the UDT Laystall race team. In August 2014, a 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO sold at Bonham's annual Quail Lodge auction for $38.1 million. The car was purchased by Carlos Monteverde, who is the son of billionaire Brazilian philanthropist Lily Safra. It was a record at the time, but other Ferraris have since been sold for more. WeatherTech founder and CEO David McNeil reportedly spent $70 million for a Tour de France winning 1963 Ferrari 250 GTO in a private sale in 2018. The vehicle, with the chassis number 4153 GT, is believed to be the most expensive car in the world. Owning a Ferrari GTO 250 gets you into a very exclusive club. The owner's only 250 GTO tour is held in various upscale locales across Europe every year. Ralph Lauren, Pink Floyd drummer Nick Mason, and British billionaire Lord Anthony Bamford all own Ferrari 250 GTOs. Bamford actually owns two of them. The 1935 Duesenberg Short Supercharged J exudes class. This car is Hollywood royalty, so it's no surprise that one sold at auction in the summer of 2018 for $22 million. It's the most expensive pre-World War II car ever sold at auction, and it obliterated the expected sale price of $10 million. There were only two SSJs ever made, and both were given to Golden Age movie stars. One was given to Gone with the Wind star Clark Gable, and the other was given to High Noon star Gary Cooper. The cars were reportedly temporary gifts from Duesenberg in an attempt to boost the car manufacturer's popularity. The leading men were allowed to drive the cars for six months, and Cooper was so enamored by the SSJ that he ended up buying the car after the loan period was over. He bought the SSJ for $5,000, and the popularity of Duesenberg soon increased in Hollywood. Greta Garbo, Marion Davies, and Clara Bow all own Duesenbergs, just not the SSJ model. Gable declined to purchase his loaner as he already had a few Duesenbergs in his collection. The one that sold for $22 million at auction was Cooper's SSJ, and part of the reason the car sold for so much was its impressive provenance. 
Cooper wasn't the only famous person to own this particular SSJ. It was also once owned by Le Mans race car driver and America's Cup champion, Briggs Cunningham. Cunningham bought the SSJ in 1949 and stored it at the Cunningham Automotive Museum in Costa Mesa, California. Being the speed demon that he was, he couldn't just let it collect dust. Cunningham reportedly once achieved a speed of 126.6 miles per hour in the Duesenberg at Murak Dry Lake. How fun would it be to get to take this antique supercar out to the Mojave Desert and just let her rip? The SSJ is an incredible piece of automotive history. There is really no modern equivalent. It's essentially a luxury supercar. Think of it as a cross between a Bugatti and a Rolls Royce. Cooper's 1935 Duesenberg SSJ can reach a top speed of 140 miles per hour thanks to the impressive 400 horsepower supercharged straight eight engine with double overhead cams. Cooper's SSJ is not the only Duesenberg that sold for a high price at auction. In 2011, a 1931 Duesenberg Model J, known as the Whittle Coupe, sold for $10.3 million at a Pebble Beach auction. Duesenbergs of all makes and models are highly sought after by car collectors all over the world. The car company may not exist today, but it's an important part of automotive history. Brothers August and Frederick Duesenberg had a dream. In St. Paul, Minnesota in 1913, the pair began crafting engines and race cars that would make them world famous. The brothers started building the first Duesenberg cars in 1920, and from 1921 to 1937, Duesenbergs were manufactured in Indianapolis, Indiana. The cars were often called Kings of the American Road because they were so luxurious. The average price of a Duesenberg in the 1920s was about $8,500, which is about $110,000 today when adjusted for inflation. Duesenbergs were also quite successful on the racetrack. Duesenberg racing cars won the Indianapolis 500 in 1924, 25, and 1927. They finished second or third in four of the other seven years of that decade. Peter DePaolo won the 1925 Indy 500 in Duesenberg, which marked the first time the race was won in under five hours. Duesenbergs were popular with both men and women, and the company was ahead of its time when it came to equal rights. Women often worked in Duesenberg factories, inspecting parts before they were put on the assembly line. Unfortunately, the Great Depression really hurt the company, and even Hollywood couldn't save Duesenberg. The SSJ was Duesenberg's last ditch effort to remain relevant. Hollywood elites fell in love with Duesenberg once again, but the general public didn't, and the company couldn't be saved. The McLaren F1 might be the coolest car ever made. It's sleek, stylish, and has a fantastic racing history. It was one of the first supercars that Elon Musk added to his collection. He bought one way back in 1999, when he was still just an up-and-coming entrepreneur in Silicon Valley. He wasn't even a billionaire yet, and was just on the verge of creating PayPal. He described the car as a creature comfort and was thrilled to own a $1 million sports car. A 1994 McLaren F1 sold at a Sotheby's auction last year for $19.8 million, which makes it the third most expensive car ever sold at auction. So what makes this McLaren so special? Elon Musk certainly didn't pay $19.8 million for his McLaren F1. The 94 McLaren F1 is one of the rarest cars in the world. It's one of only two McLarens to be modified post-production to meet LM specifications. Basically, these McLarens were modified to match Le Mans racing specifications. The other modified McLaren, a 1998 model, sold at auction for $13.75 million in 2015. If you want power and speed, this supercar has you covered. It has an unrestricted 680 horsepower GTR racing engine with an additional extra high downforce package, which means it can reach a top speed of 225 miles per hour and turn on a dime. With speed like that, it's no wonder that McLaren won the 1995 24 Hours of Le Mans. The modifications don't stop there. McLaren factory workers spent two whole years perfecting the 1994 McLaren F1. Mechanics added a brand new racing steering wheel, modified exhaust system, and 18-inch wheels. On top of that, the car was outfitted with front fender vents and a larger rear wing to make the car more aerodynamic. The 1994 McLaren F1 looks just as good on the inside as it does on the outside thanks to a cream leather interior and racing seats. Three people can fit in the car, and the driver sits in the center. It's an extremely weird configuration, but it works. Finally, the 94 McLaren was resprayed in metallic silver to really make the supercar stand out. Surprisingly, this McLaren actually sold for less than what auctioneers were anticipating. It was expected to fetch $23 million at auction, but it fell just short of that goal. There were only 64 road-going McLaren F1s ever made. Most McLarens were produced exclusively as race cars, so an LM specification McLaren is something really special. It's a McLaren race car that you can actually drive on the road. McLarens regularly sell for exorbitant prices at auction. A 1995 McLaren F1 sold for $15.62 million at an auction in 2017. The 15.62 million McLaren was the 37th F1 produced and the first F1 car to be imported into the United States. The manufacturer's suggested retail price of a 90s era McLaren F1 was about $970,000. And today, most McLarens from this era sell for well over $10 million. Formula One racing car designer Gordon Murray is working on a follow-up to the McLaren F1. 
The brand new T50 is a three-seat hypercar which will retail for about $3.2 million. It's considered the spiritual successor to the McLaren F1, which Murray also created. That's it folks! Which of these cars would you buy if you had millions of dollars to spend? Would you take these uber expensive cars for a leisurely drive, or would you keep them under lock and key in your garage? If you owned a Duesenberg, would you be tempted to take it out into the desert to try and beat Briggs Cunningham's record? Do you think Elon Musk should give up his Tesla and go back to driving a McLaren? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It really helps us out a lot. Stay tuned to this channel for more great videos.